Hey, this is Manny Moonraker, and this is UFO Buster Radio News number 190. Now, yesterday I said I was going to talk about the Utah UFO sighting. I was going to talk about how crazy it is. And yes, it is one crazy ass video. And the analysis that's come out of it is even crazier. It's almost, like I said, too good to be true. And I keep every day a new person says, Have you seen the video? Have you seen What do you think about it? Isn't it wild? Yes, it's wild. It's very wild, actually. But there's no way that I can speak to video footage. I, I can't. It's impossible. I mean, what I told you uh, pretty much yesterday was it. It came over a couple of hills, went behind some trees, then it came over, it zoomed by the drone, it banked really hard, and it was like, wow, we, is that real? It is probably the, uh, the single best UFO slash UAP video you're probably going to see or have seen in a long time, actually. What I did, however, is this. In the description, I have the original footage, the link to the original footage of this when it was captured back October of 2016 by the uh, documentary guys, Sam Shorttech and Jimmy Chappie. And then you also have a uh, couple of uh, video analysis of this UAP slash UFO and then there's another one that has the raw footage in it, and it also includes an interview that the two conducted about this thing. And you will hear that the, the, the drone that they were using was no more than 500 feet away when this thing zoomed by. And that they were there in its presence, they didn't feel it, they didn't see it. It wasn't until they got to their destination that their drone pilot or technical technician, videographer, drone dude, that it wasn't until he started looking through the footage that he realized, holy shit, what the hell did we just capture? Now listen, there is going to be naysayers, right? I mean, think about it. If you put the whole story together, you've got people who deal with videography, who film documentaries, who are using a drone, who may have other skills... Of the CGI nature. Yeah, I'm sorry. No fucks given. It is very possible. It, I'm no, I know it's going through the minds of everyone. And I've seen the people saying it's debunked. It's a bird. But for fuck's sake, I don't see any wings on that thing. And there's other videos that say they can definitely see a cockpit. <laughs> okay. I, don't, I wouldn't even take it that far. No matter what this is. It's proximity to uh, Area 51. Uh, the fact that it is flying so damn fast, and the videos are saying from analysis, uh, close to 90,000 miles an hour, and the fact that it banks. If there's a human being sitting in that thing, if it's a real thing, there's some explaining to do, Lucy. Because... At that speed, fuck my life. If it is American made, there's technology out there that might support crazy ass rubber dickers that say they've been to Mars several times over the last two, three decades. I mean, if that thing is real, we, we can't. We can't honestly say that people are, have not been involved in deep space missions and uh, are being taken away by certain dark entities of the government to, to be super troopers or some shit like that. You just got to look at the video. I, I, can't, I can't stress that enough. It's hard for me to explain it because the shock and awe is looking at the footage. And a lot of you have seen it already. You've been pigging me about it. Um, yeah, so check it out. Check out the video. If you haven't done it. And then if you want to have a discussion about it, you know where to reach me. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll be glad to chat about it. I'll be glad. I mean, you know, I might say something off the wall because that's what the fuck I do. 
But just know that this is serious business. And the more you look at this, the more you're like perplexed. The more you wonder, the more you start, you know, that little monkey in your brain just starts going and going and going and turning all the wheels. And you start thinking all kinds of thoughts. But the video itself is fucking bananas. So check it out. Talking about bananas. Talking about bananas. So far, it turns out that folks in science are really uh, coming out. They're really coming out of the woodworks to support the idea of alien life. To support the idea that some shit floating in space could be alien. And they keep coming, constantly. The article, though it's not from one of my favorite sources, is titled Alien Life on Mars Bombshell. Physicist Brian Cox admits alien life must exist in space. That's right, Brian Cox. Don't you guys make any statements about what I said. Apparently, Mr. Cox is a TV physicist. And he says, pretty much, listen... We can't be idiots about this. We can't be close-minded. We got to we got to we got to use our brains, right? We as humans and everything else on this planet didn't just pop out of fucking nowhere. And we can't all assume as we've said here many times on this podcast that in this vast universe of billions of trillions of stars that we are the only ones on a small measly blue planet that are alive. Apparently, Mr. Cox, or Dr. Cox, uh, was actually on the Joe Rogan show, the Joe Rogan podcast. And of course, Joe Rogan quizzed him. You know, Joe Rogan, for you haters, doesn't give any fucks either. I know that one, some of you are cringing just because I said that. Yeah, God, Lee, give me a break. He admitted that he likes to, at times, think about the idea that at the very least there is microbial life evolving somewhere on the red planet or even the moons of Jupiter because, as you all know from the news over the last few years, there is a form of liquid water. So Dr. Cox, in this uh, interview, interview <clears throat> excuse me, said, uh, I think there must be alien life, even in the solar system. I would not be surprised if we find microbes on Mars or the moons of Jupiter or Saturn where there's liquid water. The reason I think that, and it's a guess, is if I look at history of life on Earth, when, when Earth formed, there was no life. It was a ball of rock, and almost as soon as it cooled down, we see evidence of life. Here's another one with a degree. He is a physicist who is pretty much saying, stop and use your fucking gray matter. Take our planet as an example. You know, this is why we identify other planets in the so-called Goldilocks zone. Because people use their brains, they use their scientific knowledge, and then they hypothesize that basically, if you have the same situation in another solar system attached to another star, it is more than likely that life will evolve there also. Dr. Cox here is saying the same thing. He's saying, let's use our brains. Let's really focus on the fact that we will find microbial life and stop dicking around and acting like it doesn't exist. This is the issue. But it's a good thing to see people like this in his stature. And the fact that he is, <laughs> he's on TV all the damn time. And he's a particle physicist. What more can you ask for? There should be more people like the Cox here coming out and just letting people know that it's okay. It's okay to accept the idea that even if it's just a fucking amoeba on Mars, that there is life elsewhere. And that fucking amoeba in another solar system or 
uh, another galaxy altogether could have already evolved into something else. The best thing about the article, and it's linked in the description, so you guys can go uh, check it out and, uh, you know, really take a look at it. Look at, uh, at uh, uh, you know, what the hell is going on. By the way, uh, Zach wants to know how that is spelled. I think he's he's talking about the name Dr. Cox. Listen, I I really tried to stay away from that, Zachariah. I didn't want to get into that. If you heard me, I said no. I, I'm not going to spell Dr. Cox for anybody. Because it's not the name. It's not the name. It's the message. And maybe us in ufology have got to accept that we are being taken down the road of microbial life. Let's just fucking accept it. Notwithstanding all the UFOs, all the alien abductions, and everything else that happens, you know, anything else that happens, we have to accept that uh, mainstream science is going to take us down the amoeba path. I mean, there's nothing else we can do. Unless that someone that's getting abducted like a whole Travis Walton situation and decides to put up a fight and do some MMA shit on some alien and bring him back so that we can see him on, uh, you know, on the evening news, we're fucked. We're totally fucked in that respect. We will have to wait for microbial life to be discovered first and be taken down, uh, well, will be taken down the rubber-dicking path of science because until science admits it, I mean, we're pretty much just screwed. We, we, you can just forget about it. But trust me, the way the space race is going right now, with these corporations and these governments, this discovery of microbial life is a hop, skip away. It will happen within the next... Let's say 10 years. A lot of people say 5 years. I say within the next 10 years. We will have that evidence. Because there's just no way. There is just no way that the cold flu and uh, all these other bacteria does not exist on another planet. I mean, there's just no way. There's, there's freaking multicellular shit somewhere in this solar system. We're, just, we're not that lucky. We cannot be that fucking lucky. Otherwise, we'd all be hitting the goddamn lotto every year, twice a month. Plain and simple. Stop rubber-dicking me. We're heading into the weekend, and I hope Dr. Cox is going to have a good time. But I hope you guys have a good time, too. And for all of you guys who continue to uh, enjoy the moon rocks, because uh, I keep on getting messages about moon rocks, listen... You guys got to be careful out there. Just uh, just be real careful. You don't get caught by 5-0. And uh, just to help you guys start the weekend, the name of this song is 5-0. Because uh, 5 is always lurking. This is Manny Moonraker. I'm checking out. Ciao.